Hello, welcome to uh, Business 146. Oops, excuse me. 146. Uh, today we're going to do um, Chapter 2, Money Management Skills. My name is Dr. Yoli from Gadsden State. And we're going to do this a little differently. I'm going to have some short uh, quizzes. And then um, we're going to, to do a, a couple of short ones. We're going to talk about... Um, Financial statements, we're going to do some. We're going to go over those individually. So we'll have three or four quizzes here, but they'll all be short. Now, personal financial statements, the main purpose of these is um, to report your connect for current financial condition, mostly for yourself, but you might need to do this. If, say, you were starting a business, you needed to get a loan, you went to a bank, they're going to want to know what do you own, how much do you owe the people, and what have you got left over. We're going to measure your progress towards financial goals, okay? Uh, I may want a net worth of a million dollars by the time I'm 55. Okay, uh, maintain information about your financial activities and to provide data for preparing tax forms or applying for credit. So maybe you want to start your own business, you'll need these things. Now, the first thing we're going to do is what's called a balance sheet. And that is a financial statement that reports what an individual or family owns and owes at a specific date. These can also be called um, net worth statements. Uh, they can also be called a statement of financial position. And it's very basic and simple, especially if you've had any accounting. It's just like a balance sheet for a business. You take the items of value, what you own. You subtract out the amounts you owe, what you owe to others. And what's left over is your net wealth. Okay. So the first thing we do is start with list, uh, a list of items of value. That's step one. You're going to have liquid assets, cash, things that are easily turned into cash, bank account balances, real estate, your home, maybe if you own some properties, a vacation home, a second home, a rental home, personal possessions, maybe if you own some nice jewelry or a nice cars, you're going to add those in there. And then investment assets, stocks, bonds, things like that. Those are your items of value. That's what you own. Then you're going to subtract out later what we're doing here in step two, and that is we're going to determine the amounts of money that we owe to other people. And we have current liabilities. These are liabilities uh, or debts that must be paid within a short time, usually a year. So if you have uh, maybe a small loan or uh, something that you're going to be paying off within the year, that would be a current liability. And then we have long-term liabilities. These are debts that are not required to be paid in full for more than a year. This might be something like a car loan, a student loan, a home loan, a mortgage. Okay, These things are long-term liabilities. So these are all the things we owe to other people. And then step three is compute your net worth. We take the value of the things we own, subtract what we owe to other people, and that would give us our net wealth. Now, this is very hard to see, but this is a simple personal balance sheet that Sandra and Mark Scott uh, made. And up here, you can see we have liquid assets, and they've got a checking account balance of $1,450. They've got savings and money market accounts, okay, which we'll deal with in Chapter 4, of $5,235. And then they've got a cash value of a life insurance of $3,685. These are all things that could be relatively easy and quickly converted into cash without a loss of value. And you can see here we've got $10,370 in liquid assets, so they're doing pretty good. Then we look at real estate, the current market value of your home. And in this case, Sandra and Mark own a home that has a market value of $189,900. If you aren't sure, a very simple way of getting a value for your home would be to go on to Zillow. Now, those things aren't tremendously accurate. They're based on tax records. Tax records are notoriously bad. They're, they're slow to adjust when prices are going up fast, and they're slow to come down when prices are going down. But Zillow would be a cheap, easy, free way to do it. Or you could pay an appraiser to come and appraise your home. You can look at homes that are similar to yours. There's another different ways you could do this. Then we've got personal possessions. The market value of the two of the automobile that they own, eight thousand. Furniture and appliances, five thousand nine hundred. Home entertainment system, twenty six hundred. Home computer, fourteen hundred. Jewelry, twenty two hundred. We add all these things up. They've got. $20,100 in personal possessions. Now, you want to be careful here because you want to make sure that this is something you could actually sell. 
um, you know, a lot of the furniture and appliances, maybe, you know, they might not get that much for it. We don't know. I don't know how they, they, they determine their actual number, but you want to be relatively conservative here. And then we have investments and assets, and they've got a retirement account worth $26,780, mutual funds of $11,890, so they've got investment assets of $38,670. Now we're going to add the liquid assets, the real estate, the personal possessions, and the investment assets, and that will give us their total assets. So all the the valuable things that Mark and Sandra own add up to a value of $259,040. So that's what they own. Now we want to see the, the, the money value of what they owe to other people. So if you look here, liabilities, we've got current liabilities, and they've got some medical bills for $150. Those are things that are going to be paid off within one year. Charge account and credit card balances, $3,340. Balance due on an auto loan of seventeen fifty. So we add those things up, and these and Mark and and Sandra have five thousand two hundred and forty dollars worth of current liabilities. They also have some long term liabilities. The mortgage on their home ninety one thousand six hundred dollars. Home improvement loan that they took out one thousand seven hundred sixty dollars, and they've got a student loan for twelve hundred. Okay. Um, so we add those up and it comes to $94,560 in long-term liabilities. We add the long-term and the current liabilities together and that tells us they've got $99,800 in total liabilities. Take the value of their total assets, subtract the value of their total liabilities, and as you'll see here, you get a net worth of $159,000. $240. So Scott and, or excuse me, Sandra and Mark, Scott aren't doing too bad here. Okay. And you should sit down and, and think about this and do this for yourself. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the assets minus liabilities give us your net wealth or the bottom line on that, that personal balance sheet. That is not the amount of cash they have available. For example, to sell the home, it might take six months to a year. Uh, some of the jewelry might be very hard to sell, okay, and get the kind of money that they think it's worth for. So um, you have to remember that's not uh, cash available. And this is the amount technically you would have left if all the assets were sold for the listed value and all of your debts were paid in full. Assets equal liabilities plus net worth. Assets minus liabilities equal net worth, where we can just add liabilities to both sides, and our assets are equal to our liabilities plus our net worth. Now, insolvency is the inability to pay debts when due, and generally this occurs when liabilities far exceed your assets, okay? So if you're doing this and you notice, hey, I don't have a lot of net worth, that's a good sign that I need to be careful. I need to not take out any more credit. Then I need to pay attention to paying off bills, not spending, and maybe saving some of that money to build up my uh, assets. Okay, Savings, build up your assets. Paying off bills, reduce your liabilities. That would increase your net worth. Okay. We've already talked about it. increased savings, reduce your spending, increase the value of investments and other possessions, and reduce the amounts owed. So pay those bills off, pay the car off. Don't take out and go buy a new car. Say, hey, we're going to keep this car for a while. Okay, I, I can tell you right now, there's nothing better than owning a car that you don't have to make payments on. The converse side of that is you have to pay for repairs oftentimes. Okay, increase your savings. Okay. We'll do that when we do a budget, okay, a family budget. We'll sit there and say, hey, we're, we're not looking too good on that net worth end. We need to start saving some money, and to do that, we're going to budget it. We're going to put it in there. Just like the car payment, we're going to pay ourselves. We're going to say, okay, we're going to take $100 a, a month and put it in a savings account or, or use it to buy uh, some form of an investment or whatever, okay? Increase your savings. Reduce your spending. Okay, those are all ways to increase your net worth. And that will be the end of this short lecture. 
we will have a very short quiz and then we'll talk about the cash flow statement on the next um, video. Thank you.